Previously on the Indu Podcast. So for more than a year, someone was clogging the toilets at DON Community Center by pushing a 20-ounce soda bottle into the pipes, causing thousands of dollars worth of damage for repairs. This is a crazy person, just a heads up. Uh, the Public Works Department would have to remove the entire toilet to get the plumbing underneath to remove the bottle. And police put out a plea to community to please help figure out who's doing this. They found him. And uh, the police sergeant said it's a serious, it's serious. And we don't want to inconvenience the people of Sheboygan or our visitors. And we don't want to waste any more taxpayer dollars. That almost sounds like a, a Florida man. Um, <laughs> doesn't it? Probably. I'm trying to figure out what was the point of doing that and who knew to even give pointers to be like, <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, well, how do you know? Were, we, were, were you there? Were you watching it? I want to know why he did it. Right. That too. Why? That too. That's the most important question is why, sir? Yeah. Why? Was, he was, you know, crazy? Was he white? Like, what was the reason why? He FX presents the Indie Podcast with your host, T. Sterling Watson. Good morning, Indubians. I'm T. Sterling Watson. And I'm Courtney. This is the Indu Podcast. Thank you for stopping by and pressing play. This is week number seven, not week number 77. This is episode number 77. <laughs> this, uh, we are having a brain fart for a second. We're recording live from the south side of Wakanda in little new Indubia on the corner of Tachaka and MLK Drive. And we have a special guest with us this day whenever you're listening to this because i just want to <laughs> say tonight but um before we jump into how everybody's doing let us welcome blair and Monty. Woo! Woo! Goes wild. Wild. welcome wild. Thank, you. thank you so much for having having me i'm um live from the floor of my brooklyn apartment oh nice nice, nice. <laughs> i hear the weather's good there so it's not too bad. And, you know, with the par- the apartment prices these days, it's nice to have a floor mm-hmm. to sit on. At least. <laughs> at least a floor. Did it come it's with a roof? It's the little things in life, right? <laughs> Truly. I hope it at least came with a roof. So. Uh, patchy. Oh, okay. An area. <laughs> <laughs> but you got one. You didn't ask for a good one. True. Hmm. <laughs> for whatever reason, we tend to talk about weather here pretty often and... We we were scheduled to meet like a month ago, but a tornado came and attacked actually both of us um, in our areas. So a month later, here we are. So I'm glad we both survived. Tornado free, mm-hmm. liberated yeah. from the tornado yes. oppressors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which reminds me, I think Sharknado 6 should be on the way next month. I'm excited. I don't don't understand. I'm playing. I don't get it either, but I'm, you know, there's something for, for everybody. And there is Sharknado really that proves that. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. You're absolutely right. It does. It's it's escapism in its purest form, and I'm here for it. So, just mm. turn. You know. So you're the culprit. You're one of the culprits who keeps it running. I'm is gonna, that what you're saying? I'm going to take blame for it. Yes, I will okay. be one of those people's. Like, oh, Sharknado 17. I'm here for it. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> oh Lord. Uh, hopefully by Goodness. then they'll ask me to be, you know, at least either a victim or just one of those walk-on, just really cheesy roles. Like, ooh, a shark, and then you know, I get <laughs> or chomp. Uh, okay, I'll be. I'll watch if you're on it, but only and only then. Okay. I mean, you have to at least watch 16 to figure out how I got to 17. <laughs> You're just trying to get me to watch this ding-dang sh- this <laughs> movie. I just, uh, why are you doing this to me? And it's weird the fact that, like, I think the fifth one is better than the fourth one. The fact that I can say that, it's, it's weird to me. <laughs> um, but back to Blair. Let's, I mean, we know who you are, but who who are you? I 
am the night. No, I'm playing. Um, <laughs> shout out to all of my comic book fans for that one. But um, my name is Blair Amani. I'm a black uh, bisexual Muslim activist. People find that baffling, so I tried to explain things through that. Um, people started to know who I was after I got arrested at a poli- at a peaceful protest. It was also policeful and peaceful protest. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, had a Freudian slip there, but um, <laughs> after that, I started, that was uh, protesting the death of Alton Sterling, the murder of Alton Sterling in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, after, a year after that, I, you know, was continuing to raise um, raise my voice about different issues, and I went on Fox News, where I accidentally came out publicly as a queer Muslim. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Wow. And then, um, now it's a year after that, and I'm still... You know, kicking, running around, causing a ruckus. I have a book coming out in October called Modern Herstory. So mm. I've been trying to leverage these viral moments in my life and um, really create both a career out of it. And, uh, you know, I really feel that as a marginalized person, as, a, you know, somebody who's from traditionally silenced groups, it's mm-hmm. important for us to, you know, take away society's right to commodify us and really you know, make that a strength so that we can be in control of our own careers. Mm. Mm. Wow. Well said. I'm getting some background rustling, just by the way. I'm hearing it too. Looking at you, mm. Courtney. It's probably me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, I told you. Sorry. I told you. <laughs> should I should I re-record that part, or do you think it's fine? It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Okay. Cool. We're, we're pretty rough and tumble here. Sometimes I'm the culprit. I'll I'll take blame for it, but this time it is not me. <laughs> it's me. I'm. It's me. I'll. I'll. I'll own up to my shortcomings. Mm-hmm. I. I owned up to shark, Sharknado, but with pride, you know. But you shouldn't have. <laughs> you should have just let that one slide and I, let it I, I should have. Um. But modern her story, stories of women and non-binary people rewriting history, is something I'm very, very much looking forward to, and I. Thank you. I high key didn't think anyone would buy the book. My mom confessed to me um, when I was back home this uh, this past week that she didn't think anybody was going to pick up the book and that she was going to have to publish it out of pocket. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow. thanks for believing in me, mom. Like shade, like just she was yeah. like, I'm so proud it's successful. But girl, I thought I was like, oh, ah. <laughs> so it's great to hear that it's successful. Um, and I mean, if your mom's going to throw shade at you, at least it's in a alternate dimension mm. sure you know? mm-hmm. sure that's <laughs> wow yeah um i was going to try to do a amazon giveaway with it but you can't do that to books that haven't come out yet so I have to, I, I know, soon I have, I have to wait until october at, what was the date again 16 16 okay so we'll probably re- try to repeat that date as much as possible but you can also pre-order it on Amazon which I believe I've already have. I don't think I Or you can go to a small indie bookshop. You, if you go to Indiebound, you can find all the different links in your favorite bookstores to buy it from at modernherstory.com. Okay, even better. And that's my time. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no. We we have credits. much 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 <laughs> more to to discuss. Um but yeah, I am really looking forward to that because uh, a Mutual friend of ours is featured in that book, uh, Vilissa Thompson. Yes, she is. I was so excited with Vilissa. We put Vilissa on the cover, and one of the most, like, um, not heart-wrenching, but, like, heartwarming feelings was Mm -hmm. asking Vilissa and another woman, Sandy Ho, um, who is also featured in the book, both of whom whom use wheelchairs, um, asking how they would like to be depicted because we depicted most Mm -hmm. folks uh, as portraits. And Mm -hmm. I was like, well, you know, you use a wheelchair as part of your life, you know, um, part of your story. How would you like to be depicted? And I believe it was Sandy who said that I was the first person to ever ask her that. Mm. Oh, wow. I was like, wow. So like already I feel like this book is doing momentous things. Like um, I haven't seen other women's history books that have been, that are so diverse. That's the reason I wrote the book. And Mm -hmm. I also haven't seen, uh, there's very few covers with people who are depicted in wheelchairs, Mm -hmm. people who are depicted um, with, you know, visible disabilities. Um, And then for those people to be also folks of color, um, Mm -hmm. that was a really exciting thing for me to bring to the table. Wow. I truly am excited. It did inspire me for one of my black history facts a few weeks ago, which that's what I forgot to look up who that person was. Um, I think they are on the cover though. So if you kind of, if you're able to scroll through the names off the top of your head, 
be able to pick them out. Oh, yeah. Um, Marsha P. Johnson. There's uh, Lorraine Hansberry. That's Cat Black. Lorraine mm-hmm. Hansberry? Yes. I was actually able to interview her sister, who's still living, um, Mamie nice. Hansberry, and really get into uh, more details about what inspired the Crystal Stair, what the family went through during the litigation battle when white mm-hmm. homeowners wanted them to vacate the area despite their right to live there. Um, and the fact that a brick was thrown at them through a window, nearly hitting Lorraine. Lorraine's life might have been mm. far shorter than mm. it already was, and we might not have had wow. the literary genius um, because of racist hate violence and domestic terror. So um, just seeing Mamie relive those moments and being so excited to see her sister in this book um, was another layer. I'm just like, I'm getting chills right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. It is. It is. And. I, for one, I thank you so much for writing this book and sharing this knowledge and this information, which I can say, at least for me, I'd never would have known if, like, mm-hmm. I've never even seen a book like this and I never would know. But I definitely would. Right. can't wait to read it, can't wait to talk about it, can't wait to share it with other people because it's, this is important. So, I Thank agree. you. There's a lot of stuff that I would never have known either, like um, things like Chen Xing Wu. Um, was her name. She was part of the Manhattan Project, and I had done um, a piece on her for Equality for her, my nonprofit, which kind of prompted this whole book process, but I didn't even um, realize that there was a, um, a an experiment called the Wu Experiment that she named and created, mm-hmm. um, and two male scientists who worked in the lab with her got the Nobel Peace Prize for that. <gasps> Mm. Experiment, oh, wow. which was commonplace. Mm. So well, sure. just to like learn about how a woman is the reason that we, you know, the, the Manhattan Project happened for that woman wow. to be Chinese American and then for that woman to have a, a, an experiment that she named after herself to uh-huh. be given to a man. Um, wow. So I was like, wow, sexism is so deep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. wow. I did not know that. <laughs> you, you didn't. You, you should have said spoiler alert first, so that way, you know. But well, it already happened. But some of I these know. things are really very much like spoilers. Like there's uh, stuff that I don't want to reveal because it's like so intense. There's people in the book. You know, the um, the on the publisher's website, Penguin Random House, you can view the full list of people. But I didn't. You know, I kind of thought these would just be random stories that we'd just be kind of like throwing to a wall, hoping they stick. Mm-hmm. But they have mm-hmm. such a uh, undercurrent of connection across different chapters. And that's what I'm really excited for people to see and for that to resonate. Mm. I'm like I said, I'm, I'm excited. I'm ready for this. And uh, yeah, I'm comes out October 16th. I, that's October 16th. Sure does. Oh, awesome. I'm ready. I am ready for that. Um, yeah, so both of you actually have, I guess, recently returned from some trips and I'd like to, you know, know a little bit about, uh, Blair, you went to to Kenya. Uh, Yes, well, Kenya forever. Um, (laughs) I landed in the airport and was immediately making Wakanda jokes and I know that I'm not the first, last, second, (laughs) or 49th person to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, when I got to the immigration and, like, customs like check in in Kenya um the man like beckoned me to the table I was almost through the door but you know like they randomly select so I gave him my paperwork he's like so where are you going sister and I was like to Wakanda and he was so fed up he didn't even look at my bag <laughs> he was like goodbye so if you're trying to smuggle stuff into Kenya that's a great start no I'm playing <laughs> um, don't do that I was about to write uh, it down. one interesting thing one interesting thing about Kenya that if you are going um they have the most a uh, harsh plastic bag ban in the hmm. world. Um, they're hmm. very environmentally conscious. People like to think that, you know, all of Africa is this like desolate brown wasteland, the way they depict it on globes and stuff. Right. But mm-hmm. um, Kenya was just so lush and beautiful. And the people are so um, committed to like progressivism and like in the positive way, not in like a liberal way, mm-hmm. decolonization, mm-hmm. Um, science, STEM is really big in the schools that I visited. And, hmm. You know, just environmentalism, like, I think that they're not only, like, a 10-set bag fee, but if you are found with a plastic bag that you bring into Kenya, you can get fined up to 40000 American dollars. So, I think it's, wow. Like, wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh. All right. That's amazing. Yeah, you never hear about that. Well, I don't. I've never heard of that. Uh, I mean, I'm definitely I didn't know notes. about it either. So, hmm. wow. Interesting. But overall, you had fun. I saw something. Oh, I had... 
tweeted. I had the best time. I got the worst sunburn. Um, I was out there trying to flex my melanin, and God was like, girl, what? Where? <laughs> I'm light-skinned. For those who haven't seen my picture, I was born see-through. Um, and will I remain see-through until I was about five years old at a big blue vein in my forehead. Mm. Um, very thick, curly hair, bright blue eyes that are now green for no reason. That's me. Um, no longer see-through. I'm, you know, finally opaque, um, but I got more sunburnt than an Englishman that was on the trip with us, and I was clowning around, you know, I think I actually hurt his feelings a bit, because I was like, oh, you're going to get so sunburned. Mm. And then I was like, no, just kidding. I'm going to get the most sunburned because I'm the most... Um, arrogant about it Uh, (laughs) and and sure enough (laughs) sure enough my skin which is usually covered up to my neck because i'm muslim and my head's usually covered my scalp got burned my chest got burned it it looked like i was wearing a red shirt Um, oh wow but other than that i had so much fun like it was such a fulfilling experience um i can't disclose all the details of what i was doing in kenya until august so no spoilers there not even vague ones very thorough non-disclosures um, it was for Black Panther 2. Just kidding. That would be so <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. That would be so dope. And um, then you just, just disappeared right now because you already you know, <laughs> said too much. I know, right? But, um, yeah, so I'm really excited about it. But it was just such a fulfilling experience. Like what um, the director of Black Panther, whose name escapes me briefly, said at the – there we go. Like Ryan Kugler said at the, just kidding, fam. I didn't forget his name. Um, but like <laughs> Ryan Kugler it. said um, <laughs> at the, uh, the BET Awards, like really go to Africa if you can. And if you can't like learn about it, because just being able to like go outside and see billboards for like bundles in a, but like, it, it's like if you walked down like um, Times Square and you just saw bundles and like, cornrow like Uh offerings Mm -hmm. and you were like yes this is my family and like you're looking at a doritos like ad and it's black Mm -hmm. people and a coca-cola and it's black people and it's not even tokenized like literally everybody's black all different shades Mm. um going to baby gap and seeing all the black babies like that was so amazing and going the money there's black people on the money like that blew my mind like the amount of representation we don't have in this country Mm -hmm. was really made clear and that's somebody and I'm, I'm somebody who does work in representation so i was like we have a long way to go and we have a lot to aspire to right that's very interesting i never uh, it makes a lot of sense but the, the just you saying the representation of black people everywhere in africa that's actually something i never thought about i mean it makes perfect sense but I, that's not what I'm used to. I guess I'm used to seeing everything, but and so to to see to hear you talk about it like that is actually kind of eye opening to me. As oh, it's sad as that is, shook. you know. I was shook huh. the whole time. The first time the cashier handed me the shillings—that's what they call it—with mm-hmm. um, the first president of Kenya, um, and they were decolonized or still going through that process. But the British left in the '70s or early '70s or late '60s. Um, and he handed me the money, and I was like, black people on money? Mm-hmm. And the dude, like, he just, like, smiled at me knowingly. He was mm-hmm. like, yeah, fam. Yeah, fam, <laughs> you know? Um, and I brought the money home to, like, show my cousins, and I showed, like, my younger cousins who were, like, 9, 10, and 11. And they mm-hmm. were like, yo, he even got an afro, what? <laughs> like, that was just really exciting, but it really made me understand, like, we don't really have anything in America. Right, right. Um, and then I was like, I wish Wakanda was real. Mm. So, right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. That sounds amazing. And I am looking forward to whatever is happening in August. That and can I, can I wax poetic just for another like two minutes? <laughs> sure. The other thing. So then I was looking up Wakanda randomly on Twitter search when I got back home because I wanted it to be real. I guess that's what it's like when you open the fridge for more food. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> And they, I saw this thread about this. Uh, it was like some, you know, like African Africans talking about some African Americans. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a distinction about mm-hmm. how a lot of folks feel like, you know, Black Americans want Wakanda to be real more than they respect the continent. And I think that's, you know, when I thought about wanting Wakanda to be real after going to Kenya, it made me think about that and how. I don't think that it's a rejection of African cultures by any means. I think that Mm -hmm. it's this like dissonance that we have as black Americans where we feel very, or at least for my family, like we feel very, 
disconnected yet intimately connected and it's the fear of rejection like mm. are we family will we be seen as family will we be seen like i i know i was afraid because i'm light-skinned if i would just be read as white mm -hmm. but no yeah. people knew i was black and a lot of folks thought i was just kenyan and british and i was like oh, oh, oh. Mm. um mm. and so i think that's a really interesting conversation it really made me understand like why wakanda resonated with so many black americans mm -hmm. because while it was a white American construct, it was still an American construct. And it was still like this idea that it's a place for like for us by us. Mm -hmm. um, and because it's fictitious, we don't have that fear of rejection. So I just wanted to talk about that for a minute. Wow. That makes a lot of sense, though, because because there is such a I don't know what to call it. There's such a thing between a lot of African-Americans or African Africans or black Americans, however you identify, but there's a, there's a thing there, there's a tension there. And so that makes a whole lot of sense to me. I, so many African born or Af you know, straight up Africans look at black Americans with, you know, whatever type of uh, thoughts and feelings they have against us. Um, sometimes and I think it's, it's both ways because my grandma, sure. for example, That's true. she had such like a stigma. I remember I wanted to get my ears pierced and she was like, oh, like those Africans. And that's on my black side. Mm. I was like, grandma, mm -hmm. wow. what the heck? And it was wild. Mm. When I was in Kenya. I saw people who looked like her. Um, mm. And so that was just the wildest thing because she, you know, she grew up. She was born in the 20s. So she's growing up in a space where white assimilation is popular than black, mm -hmm. you know, like blackness, mm -hmm. you're supposed to be proud of your blackness and mm. right. you know, going mm -hmm. from a perm to a natural, which is what she did. But also to understand that like this idea of primitivism and a less than was still, is still yeah. perpetuated mm -hmm. in America. Mm -hmm. I remember like in biology class, we were watching um, something about like primitive cultures. And it was just like, they just like played a, like a tribal culture in Africa without any sound. So it made it seem like these people were just walking around without a language and wow. mm. really just like um, portraying incorrectly what Africa is like and making it monolithic and making it seem primitive and, you know, all of these coded things. And so I think that there's this fear of the unknown on both sides and it's sure. because of colon colonialism. Right. Um, but, yeah, it, it was definitely interesting and I think so beautiful for me when I went and I was just, like, embraced. Yeah, that's, interesting, that's but... really amazing. Like, I I think that's something that I would kind of fear as well, just going there is, like, they would know I'm an American and they wouldn't, like, you know, embrace me. But mm. I, I have hope now. So. <laughs> so you definitely recommend that we should go check it out someday. Oh, definitely. They didn't even believe I was American. That's how. That's how dope I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Um, and Courtney, you went to San Diego? I did. So I'm in real estate education by trade and so or by profession, I should say. And so uh, there is a real estate educators uh, conference. So it's, it's nationwide and it's annual. And this is my third time going to this particular conference. And of course it switches, it changes location every year. So this year we were in San Diego, which was fabulous. Um, I, I didn't, the conference was a bit, uh, it's been better <laughs> in previous years of me going, but the trip itself was really good. And I got a lot. I still was able to get a lot out of it. So that's nice. The weather was freaking amazing. So if you don't know, I'm in uh, Arkansas, central Arkansas. So it's very hot here. It's very humid. And if it rains, it gets hot, humid and muggy. So it's Gross. crazy. So R75 or R78 here in Arkansas is not the same 75 or 78 in San Diego. In mm -hmm. fact, I, <laughs> I had on a T-shirt and some yoga pants, you know, um, getting off the plane. And so I walked outside. I was I was waiting on a friend who stays out there who's picking me up, waiting for him to, I was just trying to flag him down. So I walked outside and this is my first time going out. You know, I've been traveling all day. I didn't even think about the weather. In July, like what the uh -huh. heck? <laughs> it's a mess. That's what I've heard. And I've that was I've been to California before, but it was so long ago and I was in high school and I didn't really get to experience this it was Sacramento, so I didn't really get to experience, you know, outside of whatever it was I think I was there for a conference too. But so this time I actually got a chance to walk around and, and explore and see things and so it was great. But you're right, it was very it, it was very varied and different from, I guess, what I had expected. But um, 
Overall, it was great. I had a, um, I got on several boats, which I didn't expect to do. I got to see the ocean again mm. and put my toes in the sand and collect <laughs> seashells, all that fun stuff. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, I love doing that when I go to beaches because I don't get to go to the ocean very often. So when I do, it's like a, it's like a special thing. Mm-hmm. Um, coming back wasn't as much fun, though. <laughs> and it, it wasn't because I was coming back home. I was actually... As much as I love to travel and I love to go to different places, coming home, there's there's really nothing like it. So I was very much ready to get on back home and hadn't really been feeling all that well. So I was just like, OK, I need to get home to my own space, to my bed, all of that. But um, what should have taken a like five and a half hour um trip overall because we we there's very little there's very few flights that come directly in there's always a a connection um for either if we're here in little rock arkansas and going outwards or if we're coming in there's always a connection no very rarely there's a direct flight so what should have taken a total of about five and a half or so hours took about 12 hours and mm. got I should have gotten home around for nine why <laughs> girl let me let me tell you so apparently there was weather or something I don't even know if it was weather here but so my connecting flight was was through Houston which is normal uh, my connecting flight to get to San Diego was actually in Dallas but this time it, w- it was through Houston and we were actually about 20 minutes delayed leaving San Diego. So I was like, eh, 20 minutes, that's not a big deal because my layover in Houston was about an hour and a half, something like that. Mm. So plenty, said, of okay, we, plenty of time, no problem. Mm-hmm. So we, we finally take off from San Diego and like mid-flight, which the flight was maybe three hours, something like that, two and a half. Mid-flight, um, we, a lot of people started asking about their connectings, their connecting flights. And I was like, well, I should ask, but I don't really care. It's, I have a whole hour and a half. Mm. Even with the, you know, it's, I still have time with the delay. So, you know, I don't really think much about it. They even make an announcement and saying, hey, there's a lot of people on this flight that have some really tight connections. If, you, if, you, if Houston's your last stop or you have some time to spare, please just let them go. So I was like, okay, well, I'm probably just going to have to run and book it, whatever. We'll probably be in the same, like, letter terminal Mm -hmm. or whatever right and so as soon as i'm able i you know check my phone turn on the the cell data again i take it off of airplane mode because i'm a good citizen of america (laughs) (laughs) and i follow the rules um i get this text from you know i I booked through expedia i got a text from expedia saying that my flight is to little rock is delayed for three and a half hours and I was like, what? No, this, I mean, Expedia hasn't led me wrong. They haven't told me any lies yet. But I don't really want to believe that because that's not what you want to hear when you're landing and about to get on your connecting flight. Right. But I did confirm it like three times over that that was the truth. I still really don't know what the what the issue was. I know that they told us that they were waiting on an aircraft. I don't know why they were waiting on that, though. I don't know if it was... Um, weather there, it came from Atlanta, so I don't know if there was weather in Atlanta at the time, or I don't know what the case really was. We had a perfectly smooth flight when we finally um, took off from Houston at around 1140. <laughs> mm. Um, mm, mm. That that actually kept getting pushed. At first, it was moved from 750 to like 1050 to like 1115, and then we didn't board until 1130, so it was a whole... A whole thing. So long story short, or longer story, hopefully shorter. <laughs> <laughs> I landed in here in Little Rock around 1.10 a.m. And, you know, deboarding the plane, getting my bag, all of that. I didn't get home till about 2 this morning. So, wow. Yeah. So that wasn't, that, wasn't a, that wasn't a lot of fun. But fortunately, I didn't have to work today. In fact, I don't have to work for the rest of the week. So, it's but. just now a, a fun story to tell as as part of this adventure. <laughs> oh, yeah. What in it? I, I feel like technically your adventure isn't over till you go to bed. Mm. Oh, I've gone to bed. I've been <laughs> okay. in bed all day. <laughs> I'm Plus literally one. only talking. I'm only talking to you people because we had this scheduled. Otherwise, I would still be in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the bed. I'd move to the floor. 
There you go. Sacri- we all, it's we been an in-the-bed type of day. It has been, yes. M- must be nice. <laughs> I wish I was in bed all day, but I could not. However, over the weekend, I did, too, have my own adventures. I went to Westworld. I went to Jurassic World. I went to <laughs> My Hero Academia World. Um uh, Harlem World, hot with Luke mm-hmm. Cage. Uh, so yeah, I just did a whole lot of uh, binging and watching of television. So and they have Wi-Fi in all those worlds because I was keeping up. Mm. <laughs> yeah, actually, they do. They do. Um, although I'm not sure if they do in Jurassic World because um, spoiler alert: if you didn't see the trailers, there's a big uh, volcano that erupts. Ugh, so. This movie, oh. I just I can't escape it. I think I'm going to skip it. I think that's what I'm going to skip. I usually don't skip big movies because, like, I'm not annoying. But I'm skipping this one. <laughs> You're not annoying. I just feel like it's something like people who are like, oh, I'm waiting to see Black Panther. What? For what? Christ? Why, though? Like, what? Which is extra shady coming from me because I'm Muslim. But anyway. <laughs> it is. Uh, I caught the shade. <laughs> But, yeah, I'm uh, going to be the one to skip. Ju- well, no, I can't skip Jurassic World only because I've made promises to multiple people that I'm going to finish this ding dang series out. And I'm not very happy about it because I don't I don't believe in this series. OK, I don't like it. It's it's not good. It's just a bunch of malarkey. It's the mic. It's uh, well, yes, but it's a bunch of like not even substitute malarkey like it's it's. It's Michael Bay without the as many explosions. I don't know. It's mm. just not. Well, I, will, I don't want to be there, but I'm going to be I will there. confirm this was, um, and you can quote me on this, the okayest of, you know, Jurassic movies I've seen so far. Um, mm. There, I mean, I had some fun. I, it was like marginally better than Jurassic World, but even Jurassic World mm. was just okay to me. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not really huge on dinosaurs. I'm more of like a what? Godzilla person. So what? I, I mean, mean, dinosaurs in, not, in and of themselves are awesome. Was not Godzilla a dinosaur? Right. He's a like an alien dinosaur. Yes. He, or something. He falls more under like a kaiju monster type. If you feel like there are nuances between dinosaurs <laughs> and Godzilla, you're a dinosaur person. <laughs> Quote, we make t-shirts. <laughs> I, I have to agree with her. I mean, come on, I it's mean, Godzilla. Yeah, I mean, I mean, because he has been around for a while, but he was also uh, made like from radioactive material. So he's and he does things. He's that just an alien can. dinosaur. Well, he's no, from he's Earth. A, he's an alien. Is he? Yeah, he's from Earth. So he's just a mega dinosaur then, with radioactivity in his blood. I he's still a dinosaur though. I guess. Monster, both dinosaur maybe. people. <laughs> <laughs> I am. This is why Jurassic World just pisses me off. It like makes me, it makes me really angry. It does. I'm not gonna go there today in front of company, but it, I'm not happy about it. <laughs> I'm really not happy about it. Well, I mean, at least they didn't do what Jurassic World did. It was Jurassic World was like a remake of Jurassic Park, even though it was a sequel. It was like pretty much the same story. That's what makes me so crazy. There's nothing different about that stupid movie. <gasps> well, Fallen Kingdom is not a remake of what? That's Lost the second World. one, right? right. So that's that's what oh, okay. Kind of, so, so it's, it's a, it is different. A whole new thing. Yes, the only thing that is similar is that the dinosaurs are. Wait, no, maybe I won't say anything because it <laughs> might come off as a spoiler, but. I'm not going to see this, so oh, okay. well, I don't care. Well, I'm going to see it, but I don't care. I mean, well, basically, you. Live your life. the dinosaurs come to the mainland, so that's the only similarity it has. I don't recall. Didn't they do that in, they in did Jurassic that in Lost Park, World. too? Yeah, they did that in Lost World. But, so how's it? But it's different, That's the you only say. similar thing. Yes, that's... Oh. There's some other reveals that happens, like, oh, okay, and... and they're, to me, it was like, oh, was I supposed to be concerned about this character? Were they someone in a previous movie that I forgot about? But Probably not. It's, one, it's more of those, oh, they're back. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, they're okay. still alive. They okay, were gone. Cool. It's mm. like when you find out a really old person passed away and you're like, oh. <laughs> oh, Blair. <laughs> Good for them. That, I thought they had gone to be with the Lord a couple years ago. Yes. But here they were amongst us mortals. I'm, I'm going to go ahead. We and, all think it. I'm going to go ahead and say it. <laughs> Uh, the old man from Pawn Stars, that was the most recent one. I thought he had already passed like a couple of years he ago. had already went on to glory. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. He was still alive. Okay. Well, <laughs> he is no Good longer. Good for him. Yes. 
He and, made it. You old. know, blessings with the family. Mm-hmm. It must be difficult. <laughs> I know a lot of people were shaken on the internet. So uh, I know, and kind of rough. And then I started doing the uh, tributes. I suppose he was great at pawning. I suppose I don't know, but sure. Everybody has a ministry, right? They do. They do. Um, but with Jurassic World mentioned, I will be doing a full review later this week on Patreon as well as, um, I almost called it Harlem, but Luke Cage, I'll be doing a review <laughs> with that with uh, good friend Stephanie Williams. We'll be chatting about that. Westworld, probably not because I'm still confused what happened on that show. And mm. uh, My Hero Akata, uh wow, I can't even say it now. Academia. Yes, <laughs> that's what I want to say. Academia, that's what it is. Okay, that's been... my hero, Macadamia nuts. Yeah, that's what I kind of want to say. I'm trying not to say it, but that's what I've been watching. That and Food Wars. Uh, so I'm getting some anime cred a little bit, just a little bit, just you know, dabbling here and there. But yeah, that's that's been um, this past weekend kind of absorbing all that and there's still more things it's just loaded in the dvr and one day i have to have time to watch all these things but for right now we're going to take a quick break and when we return we will have our black history fact and some sheboygan news so what now the endu podcast shannon cg lauren and mel form the Nerds of Prey. A group of ladies bonded by comics, gaming, film, television, and fandom culture. Hang out with them bi-weekly as they dig into the very things that make them loud and proud nerds. Available on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, and Google Play. Also, check out their Patreon at patreon.com backslash nerds of prey. Hey there, friend. Enjoying this podcast production? I bet your sweet buttery face you are. I bet you're also thinking, how can I support this show and look awesome doing it? Aside from telling your best pal and all their kin, you can head over to Indube.com and two clicks later after hitting the store tab, you'll find yourself with several fun and fancy swag brought to you by the fine folks at the Indube Network and Public. If you're a fan of Indube, Foo Fight, or anything under the Indubian sun, you can find it plastered on mugs, hoodies, pillows, cases, bags, and of course, t-shirts. Hurry on over now and you may catch a sale with all tees 30% off. Seriously, they have sales like every other week. So head on over to Indube.com or tpublic.com. That's T-E-E-P-U-B-L-I-C dot C-O-M and type Indube in the search bar and continue to pod with the best. And we are back. I knew it. Yes. I knew you were going to do that, Blair. Something in my spirit just told me that you was going you was going to talk and you did it. Mm-hmm. I, I, I kind of <laughs> felt it in in my bones as well, but yes, we are back to the new podcast. Um since you were conf- it just what? Yes, Sheboygan. I I enjoy Sheboygan. I like saying Sheboygan. It's uh, a little town in Wisconsin. And a couple weeks or a couple episodes ago, I know so, so I was going to do Black History. I'm switching it. I'm going to do Sheboygan now. Good morning, Sheboygan. So I like to do a little Sheboygan segment. And a couple episodes ago, I talked about a toilet tyrant who was stuffing bottles in toilets in random places in Wisconsin, not Wisconsin, in Sheboygan. I have an update for you. So a 34-year-old Sheboygan man uh, charged in connection with a rash of plugged toilets in downtown area women's restrooms told police he couldn't explain why he used soda bottles to clog the cans. Prosecutors on Monday (laughs) charged Patrick D. Beeman, or B-Man, with uh, 12 misdemeanors, all for criminal damage to property. That was after they accused him in the string of incidents dating to April 2017 that left an estimated $2,000 or more in damage to women's toilets around Dalen Park. Each of the misdemeanor charges carries up to nine-month jail sentences and as much as a $10,000 fine. Beeman is scheduled to make his uh, initial Sheboygan County court appearance July 9th. So, what a monster. He, he truly is. Um, 
According to a criminal complaint, Beeman told an officer he couldn't explain why he got urges to look for bottles <laughs> in, the, in the garage and the garbage and then put them in the toilets. So please track so, him down. Yes. Did he? Did, did we know yet why he chose the women's toilets to, to clog up? We, that's, I feel like that's an important question. We, we don't. We don't know. But, I mean, that wasn't the only thing. Um, a little further in this article, uh, he's also facing a charge for an incident involving a toilet inside an apartment where Beeman told police he was staying. So he's been doing it even at his own house or apartment. So he's just tripping on all fronts. All of it. He doesn't know why, but he okay. has urges Got to it. do this. Just, it's like, I have to plug no, this understandable. toilet. I have to. Understandable. Yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. Huh. Okay. Good I mean, to know. You just have an urge. You just have to plug a toilet. Or you just have sure. to go get bottles out of the trash and just stuff them in toilets. Put them somewhere. That's not <laughs> recycling. <laughs> <laughs> it's recycling incorrectly. Um, this is how not to recycle. How not to recycle. That's right. <laughs> yes. Um, so there you have it. Because I know we were trying to figure out why he was doing this before when we talked about it. And um, mm-hmm. even he doesn't know. It's just... Mm, bless, bless. Yes, this and is hard. I feel like he'll end up on some A and E TV show, uh, My Weird Addiction or something. So <laughs> uh, that show's wild. I've it's good though. I've heard. I'm afraid it's if so I start good. watching it, I'll be addicted to the show. You so. will. Yeah, you will. It's really good. Yes, they should do like a crossover episode with themselves. Um, <laughs> with themselves. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's Inception level type stuff right there. I can't take it. Uh, we will now go into our Black History fact. Black History. Black History. Black History. Black History. Facts. Uh, this one was provided to us by Courtney. So thank you very much for sending us. Hey, hey, hey. Actually, this, That's me. This, this will actually be a portion because we are going to be doing special um, longer Black History facts on the Patreon. They're not quite made yet, but that's coming. So today we will be talking about Olivia J. Hooker. Sorry, Dr. Olivia J. Hooker, who was born February 12th, 1915, is first African-American woman to have entered the U.S. Coast Guard, which she did in February 1945, and a retired psychologist and professor. Uh, Hooker, hold on a second. Um... Hooker was born in Muskegee, Muskegee, Oklahoma, on February 12th. Said that already. Uh, KKK members ransacked her home during the Tulsa massacre, which is something we'll be talking about later, while she hid under a table with her three siblings. The Tulsa race riot, sometimes referred as the Tulsa massacre, it took mm-hmm. place between May 31st and June 1st, 1921, when a white mob attacked residents and businesses of the African American community. And of Greenwood in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is considered one of the worst incidents of racial violence in the history of the United States. The attack destroyed more than 35 blocks of the district, at the time the wealthiest black community in the U.S. After the riots, Hooker's family moved to Columbus, Ohio, where she earned her Bachelor's of Arts in 1937 from Ohio State University. While there, she advocated for African American women to be admitted to the Navy. Uh, Hooker applied to the Navy, but was rejected due to her ethnicity. She disputed the rejection due to a technicality, and Hooker was accepted. However, she had already decided to join the Coast Guard. She entered the U.S. Coast Guard in uh, 1945. She was one of only five African-American females to first enlist in the SPAR program. In June 1946, the SPAR program was disbanded, and Hooker earned the rank of Petty Officer, Second Class, and a Good Conduct Award. In 1961, she received her Ph.D. in psychology from University of Rochester. In 1963, she joined Fordham University as a senior clinical lecturer. Eventually, she served as associate professor until 1985. She was one of the founders of the American Psychological Associations Division, Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities. That is a lot of words. Um, she served as an early director of the Kennedy Child Study Center in New York City. Later, Hooker was a founder of the Tulsa Race Riot Commission in hopes of demanding reparations for the riot survivors. In 2003, she was among survivors of the riot to file an unsuccessful federal lawsuit seeking reparations. Hooker retired at age 87. 
She joined the Coast Guard Auxiliary at age 95 and is currently serving as a volunteer in the Coast Guard Auxiliary in Yonkers, New York, and is the oldest survivor of the race, uh, Tulsa race riots. And that is Dr. Olivia J. Hooker. Wow. Amazing. Yes. There was a lot on her, so I had to condense a lot, but I didn't want to leave some of wow. the more important stuff out. So. Mm-hmm. But, and she's currently, I think, 103. I didn't do my math. My goodness. Yes. Do you remember, do you remember during, um, what, what was that morning show, the Today Show, where they used to have, like, Smuckers sponsored the oldest people in America, and it would fly across the screen like a Smuckers label? Yes. Just me. Oh, you do remember? I don't okay, remember, good. no. I just yeah. I didn't want you to feel alone. So. Well, I, no, well, I, I remember something like that. I don't remember it being Smuckers, but I remember something. I guess that's a big part of this, but I remember where they, they highlighted anyway, it and it really featured that, those I wanted people. that to be like, I wanted that, like, I was so looking forward to that today. Like, like not today. I was so looking forward to, <laughs> forward to that when I got old, and they don't do it anymore. I don't know why I thought that would stick around, but that's so wild. I love like hearing about stories like this i think that we all have stories like this in our family also Mm. so i always really encourage like intergenerational conversations because there's so many stories and so many more stories that we don't hear that we should lift up Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's why i like doing these facts and that's why i'm so excited for your book modern her story coming out october 16th they told you gonna tell you again (laughs) um so yeah that uh, that does it for our black history fact. We're going to take another quick break and we'll return um, just some little final pieces here. And we'll be right back to the Indu podcast. The Indu podcast. Hey, I'm Nick. And I'm Victor. And this is Mega Shane. Megashine is a queer, people of color, weekly podcast, and we talk about anything from drag, to comics, to video games, to... Boys. And anything else in between. (laughs) So, if you want to listen to us, we're on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud, and you can follow us on Megashine Pod and Megashine on Twitter. That's right, so follow us, talk to us, we'll be here. And we out. Hey there, do you like talking about your favorite comic book and characters? Or a TV series you love to binge? Or how Goku from Dragon Ball Z was trash, but it was still your gateway anime? But you're also interested in talking about different social issues and current events, like representation, Black Lives Matter, the Me Too movement, or racism? Well then, you're in luck. I've got a podcast where we dive into all of that. It's called Speak On It. I'm your host, Nisha, a millennial that's just trying to live my black and nerdy life while also staying informed. So every episode, a guest and I will dive into a discussion that can cover everything from anime to activism and speak on it. You can head over to iTunes, SoundCloud, and wherever else these RSS feeds go to subscribe, listen, and stay tuned. Talk to you soon. Welcome back to the new podcast. Um, yeah, I think that just about does it. I do have a number of shout outs because I keep forgetting. Uh, I do want to shout out my mother who's taking coding classes and just encourage her. And Sam's very proud of her. Told her, you know, to her, but she's doing big things. Um, go, mama, go. Mm-hmm. Love it. Um, Robert Young, who donated so kindly to me to get me to join Wink. That is the wine delivery service. <laughs> um, so I thank you so much for, for that contribution. Uh, Warren Lauren for being a link to uh, people, some things that will be happening later on with the podcast. And of course, how can I forget my Fuffy Puffs? Uh, I got a new product from them recently, the Red Citrus Body Bar Soap. And it is it will revitalize your skin. 
fuel skin that feels a little out of balance with a refreshing rush of red, orange, lime, and tangerine. These essential oils tame greasy skin with the power of stress-based antioxidants, giving your face and body a fresh start in the light against, oh, I'm sorry, in the fight against blemishes. Mm. So, and it is very refreshing. I've, that sounds I've, awesome. It is nice. I, I washed with it and it feels like like my face is like minty. It doesn't smell like <laughs> mint, but it just has that mm-hmm. freshness of mint. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's quite nice. Um, oh, yes. And also right. my good friend, uh, my old friend, uh, Chris, who let me know today um, that he listens to the podcast, which I am so thankful and grateful for. So, oh. <laughs> yes. So thank you. Touch, touch the basements of my heart, the, the cockles of my heart, rather. <laughs> the cockles. <laughs> it, it oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, Blair, do you have any um, like shout outs or do anything you want to plug? Anything like of that nature? If the people want to follow you. Um, yeah, totally follow me on Twitter. Um, I just did an FAQ page on my website because I get a lot of annoying DMs. Mm. So I wanted to consolidate. <laughs> you know, I just redirect people to that link. So check out that FAQ page and then go from there. That's my like starter package for like what you need to know about me. The mm-hmm. second question is about being queer because it's like, hi, so you're Blair? The queer thing. What about that? And so I made a FAQ. Um, I find that just to be hilarious. Mm-hmm. I never <laughs> thought I'd need an FAQ. I don't even have one for my nonprofit, I don't think. Um, but I should probably make one. Um, check out case. the book, of course. I want to shout out the illustrator of my book, uh, Monique Lay, who... Uh, really kills it with the illustrations and um, I just feel like I don't shout her out enough this book wouldn't have happened without her so you you kick ass you know Mm -hmm. Um, Monique so keep it up keep the illustrations up and to anybody who's like thinking of writing a book or illustrating or creating or starting their own podcast just go for it I never thought that I would have a book like I talked about at the top of the podcast my mom didn't either Mm -hmm. um that she admitted to me recently (laughs) so you know go for it put yourself out there um all we have is time so use yours wisely and that reminds me you will be on a podcast too right other than this one of course is that oh yes so yes it's called hysteria you can subscribe to it now it's with crooked media uh we were number one on itunes um despite not having any episodes out yet so yeah Um, indeed but I'll be the first Muslim uh, host of a Crooked Media podcast. So I'm really excited nice. about that. Doing, doing Oprah things. Um, <laughs> I'm just really excited about it. We go and record tomorrow morning. Uh, kind oh. of too early for my taste. But hey, <laughs> that's the biz. Mm-hmm. So what is your website, Blair? BlairImani.com. Awesome. And, and that's your Twitter. I'm sorry, Sterling. That's your Twitter handle as well, right? Yep, Blair Amani across the board. Just got it. B L A I R I M A N I. Sweet. Very nice. I realized I forgot to ask you my uh, icebreaker question that I ask every first time. Oh, that's yes. right. <laughs> I forgot about that. I knew I was forgetting something, and I did, that's because I didn't write it down. I just realized, okay, I'll get it. I'll get it. Um, before I get into that, I do also want to say uh, how I first started following you, and it was at the beginning of Black History Month, and I think it was you and someone else that started a hashtag. Or hashtag fake black history. So that's how I kind of first. Yes, we did. That's how I first. That was yeah. Mara Sebastian and I being deliriously exhausted <laughs> on the train from D.C. to New York City mm-hmm. one evening. And this, we were <laughs> sick of all of the lies. So we were like, well, let's just make some lies up. Yes. Like how Oprah Winfrey bankrupted the auto industry with the you have a car episode. <laughs> like just <laughs> ridiculous stuff like that that really caught uh-huh. on. Um, it was and, a lot of fun. And, you know. Yes. We'll be doing it next year as well. Oh, great. I'll, nice. have, I'll start preparing now. Um, but let's get to your question. So uh, Ben & Jerry's is looking for a new flavor, and they decide to ask you, what would that flavor be? You can do anything you want, and you also name it whatever you want. Ooh, okay. I feel like eight-year-old Blair, who was obsessed with naming the new Crayola crayon, <laughs> would have been perfect for this. Um, probably some type of a hip hop reference, like to pimp a blueberry off of the to pimp a butterfly by Kendrick Lamar, something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it'd be like a blueberry ice cream because there aren't very many good blueberry ice cream. 
I can't even think of one. But... Me neither. So, boom, Ben and Jerry's collab with Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> Send me the dividends. <laughs> to Pimple Blueberry. I... But I think there should be more. I think that a lot of black people eat ice cream, and I think that we create a lot of culture. You know, Kendrick just got a Pulitzer, I believe. Yes. And so we need to stop thinking that we should be in silos and the industry shouldn't let us in because we create culture. Like, if... Um, Whatever that, like, Remy, whatever alcohol that, um, what's his name was shouting out, the 1738 constantly, I feel like they should collaborate. Cardi B, she should be, you know, Bacardi should get on that, you know? Like, right, it's right it's there. It's frustrating to me <laughs> mm-hmm. to see um, so many industries sleep on us. So, yeah, Ben and Jerry's, give mm-hmm. us a hip-hop flavor. Let's go. I'll, I'll reach out to them with that because, I, I, I mean, a lot of... I'm getting a lot of good suggestions for some ice cream and flavors and names. Um, you should just make a pitch deck and then, like, usurp their current marketing person. You already have the plan. I'm, I'm, yes, I'm ready. I'm going to be doing this. <laughs> I'll put this in my <laughs> itinerary. All right. Uh, thank you. That was a great. Um, yes, I'm still thinking. I'm still trying to think of a blueberry flavor, and I really can't think of any. So, yeah, you, I think you have that market cornered. Um, Courtney, not, not Ben and Jerry's, hey. but any shout outs or, <laughs> uh, um, plugs and things of that nature. Totes. So you can check me out on Twitter at I am K Hinton, where I tweet up a storm. Well, not lately. It's been more like a trickle lately, but <laughs> when I tweet, I tweet about everything from, uh, diversity matters to l- financial literacy to actual like literacy things like books and writing and things like that. And um, you can also also catch me over at Verve HC, which is the Twitter home of VerveHouseCollective dot com, the place for cre- audacious creatives, entrepreneurs, and intention seekers. And so those places are great. Uh, the Verve HC Twitter account as well as VerveHouseCollective.com, which is all about um, finding resources, finding community, finding your tribe, and um, honing in on those things that make us alive every single day. So check me out. You got bars, girl. I'm like, hey, 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 hey. I try to do it. I'm trying to be like you when I grow up. Girl, me too. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, follow me on all things Indube, uh and go to Indube.com to find the Patreon to subscribe for more perks and find my tea public store to get T-shirts, hoodies, mugs and more. Please rate, comment and share the pod on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play and Podbean. Thank you so much for supporting, listening, stopping by and pressing play. Tell someone you value that you value them and live for the folks you love. I've been your benevolent host, T. Sterling Watson. And remember... If the world didn't suck, we'd all fall off. No! The Indu Podcast is recorded in a studio somewhere on planet Earth. The Indu Podcast is part of the Indu Network. And if you'd like to get in contact with the Indu Podcast, please email indubpod at gmail.com. That is indubpod at gmail.com. You can find the Indu Podcast on Apple Podcast, Stitcher, Google Play, and of course Podbean, or wherever podcasts may be procured. If you'd like to find out more information, please visit Indube.com, where you can find our store, the blog, and of course, our Patreon, if you'd like to support and donate and find more perks and fun things to listen to and watch. For Chief, DJ Joe Daddy, Billford, this is T. Sterling Watson, signing off. Thank you so much for listening. Use your words, Chief. <laughs> Good boy. This has been another... 3SFX Production.